So a good way for humans to communicate optimization models to computers without having to write for loops and fill in matrices and stuff is using things called algebraic modeling languages. Here's a list of some of the more common ones. Uh, Ample is kind of what I grew up on as an op operations research person. Um, pulp is one that runs in Python, so that's kind of nice. Um, Lindo and Lingo you'll see advertised used in textbooks, for example. Um, so here I'm using a spreadsheet that I downloaded from Solver Studio. And let me show you quickly how to install stuff. So once you download Solver Studio, uh, it's free. Um, and extract it from the zip file. You click on Solver Studio, go inside that Solver Studio, and run setup.exe, and that installs a bunch of stuff on your computer. You have to have all your Excel stuff closed when you do that, or at least if you don't, you have to then close it and open it after uh, installing it for it to realize that there's new stuff there. And then I'm going to be showing examples from this file, pulp examples. Um, so. Uh, let me show the transportation problem here. So notice what's going on here. We've got some areas saved in our spreadsheet for like the cost to go from this warehouse to this retail location. I guess they're using bars instead of pizza restaurants, um, whatever. Uh, and then there's some space for the decision variables here. And I think the objective function value is going to go here. Um, and if I go to the data, notice there's a new solver thing ex installed, not just the regular solver. There's actually nothing filled in on that. But there's this new version of solver, or uh, replacement. And you can say things like, show the data. And this model already has regions defined for where the list of bars is, where the list of warehouses is, where the array of costs is from warehouses to bars where the decision variables are going to go. Um, we can even, uh, it'll color things uh, according to like this set name and that set name. Um, so uh, that's a nice way to structure things. And then the actual model isn't written in some products uh, in Excel formulas. It's written in a Python version, a version of Python here, where we can say, here's a list of routes um, from warehouses to bars, and um, here's our objective function. So we're summing up the variables times the costs for warehouses and bars in the list of routes. So there's that indices and set uh, summations and sets kind of thing. Um, here's constraints for the uh, demand for supply coming from warehouses, and see we've got a summation going on. Um, and uh, uh, demand at the retail locations. Um, and then we say solve it. And then you can print out some things and uh, print like what happened, did it succeed or not? What were the variable name, uh, var values of the variables? What was the overall objective function value? So if I just hit solve model here, it thinks about it and it outputs the variables there, but it also, well, it's, uh, also puts the decision variables there and says whether it got an optimal solution or was infeasible or something. Um, the next tab is really interesting too. Uh, it's the same basic problem, but now it's going to use a different demand value for one of the bars. It's going to resolve this thing over and over and over again, which is basically impossible to do in an automated way in Excel Solver. Um, so we can just hit solve model. Now this is going to flash a bunch of times, so if you're a person who doesn't like flashing screens, close your eyes and I'll tell you when it's okay. So here we go. Flash, 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 flash. About halfway done now. And okay, now it's done. Um, so it tried it at all these different demand levels, recorded the total cost for each, and then said whether it was optimal or infeasible or something. And then it graphed it. I think it had the graph pre-made. And we can see there's a sh sharp bend in the graph at one point, maybe two points. Um, so that's the nice things that an algebraic modeling language lets you do. Um, the big advantage here, uh, a few of them, um, someone can read your uh, what you type here as your model basically the same way they would read it in mathematical notation that I showed in the other video. And if you end up with more warehouses, you can expand your data range here, but you don't have to do anything different over here. You don't have to write more constraints or anything like that.
Um, so it's making the model independent from the data, and that is a big, big thing in a lot of math and computer science. One more thing, um, here's a newsletter from the Mathematical Optimization Society, and it's a pretty nice overview of the optimization modeling software landscape. So they talk about um, Lindo, um, here's kind of a by hand way to write out linear programs. Um, here's Ample, uh, which I mentioned before. Uh, another nice feature with some algebraic modeling languages is you can put in random values. If you want to try optimizing something for a random set of demands and see what the average cost tends to be, for example, uh, you can do that. I've done that with various problems um, where I, I used random uh, coefficients, resolved it every time until I found a counterexample for a theorem someone was trying to show. Um, so here's a article on pulp for Python. Uh, pulp only does linear programs, but Pyomo, another Python optimization thing, can do nonlinear programs. So that's nice. Uh, here's Sudoku written in pulp, or solving Sudoku. Um, and uh, let's see, no, a few other things. Oh, here's um, a solution to a warehouse location problem, like I mentioned in the other video, um, done in Python uh, with some plotting. I'll put a link to this thing in the description. One other quick thing I forgot to mention, modeling languages not only make your model independent of the data, they have a nice separation there, they also make your model independent of the solution method you use and the software you use. So you can formulate something in a modeling language and run this solver on it, maybe a free solver, and if that's not doing it for you, you can buy an expensive solver package from someone and run your model in that without having to reformulate your model for the most part. Um, so it's a really nice way of having data be separate than the model, be separate from the solver software you use.